welcome to another edition of uh, the Dwell podcast. And today we're going to look at a passage from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 5, verses 8 to 30. And I'm joined by two Ignite CG leaders today, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Oh, hi, I'm um, Joseph. I'm the CGL for the Secondary 2 CG, also known as, known as Anchor. Yeah. Hi, I'm Suen. I'm CGL of the Sec 3 CG, and we are called Lighthouse. All right, so welcome to the podcast. Um, so, as you read this passage, which is a rather long passage, yeah, what, what would be your key takeaway from this passage? Um, I think when reading through this passage, right, I realised that a lot of this, uh, a lot of verses were covering on different sins and different uh, mis- uh, ill behaviours that the Israelites were committing. Yep. And um, I realised that when applied to our own lives, there are a lot of parallels and there's nothing new that we are facing right now uh, that the Israelites also that didn't face. So that was, uh, these were the scenes that they endure, and I, I realized that, and I just felt that how applicable this was to us. Uh, yeah. yeah. Why do you think that is so? That what they used to do, we're still doing it now? Um, I think is, uh, I think Paul did mention in, I was re- referring to other verses, and Paul mentioned about Roman, in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 15, about how uh, we hate, uh, what, we, what we hate, we still do, what we don't. What we do, yeah, and uh, yeah, and that that makes us uh, that that shows the inherent sinful nature that we have. Uh. Yeah, yeah. That's right. It's the, really the inherent uh, sinful nature of uh, humankind, right? And Paul struggled with that himself in Romans seven. And what I do, what I want to do, I don't do. What I uh, do, I don't want to do. And they call that the do do verses, all right? And so there's, in a sense, really nothing new in the human condition. Even though times change, technology changes, uh, we're still the same sinful people who really need the Lord. Yeah. What about Suen? What's your key takeaway? I think like Joseph said, like the sinful nature was very apparent. And then in, in these verses, they broke it down into three different um, types of sin. So the first would be like, um, you know, the first would be those who are greedy and materialistic and then the second would be those who embrace sin and like mock the upcoming um, judgment yeah. Yeah, and then the last one would be um, for those um, the last few verses they did mention of those who were prideful of how much they could drink which verse are you referring um, to? So then, yeah, verses twenty two. Then they said, um, those who are heroes at drinking wine, champions at mixing, or uh, champions at mixing drinks. So then they, they pride themselves in, um, heroic, worldly heroism, like because in the world, they may see that they may think that um, drinking a lot, being good at drinking, being good at socializing in this way, um. It's cool or it's heroistic, yeah. Yeah, so they take pride in their, in their success, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, as I look at the chapter, I mean, of course, this whole passage is about, uh, you know, the sins of the city of Judah, um, how the, the sins were being denounced and the Lord highlighting their sinfulness and then pronouncing judgment on them. Yeah, so there's a lot of the word woe is used a number of times. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, their sinfulness uh, has a lot to do with, uh, I mean, for me, because my, the key takeaway for me is that the increase in material wealth um, can actually, while it makes them feel like they were okay, because uh, there was such a belief that if you're blessed, that means you must have done right in the eyes of God. That's why God bless you. And that is not different from how we, a lot of Christians feel today also. If someone is successful, they have a lot of money and they, are also go, they also go to church, they will say, oh, God has blessed them. We will say God has blessed them. Yeah, and they enjoy their wealth. Um, but as we can see in the passage, the Lord highlighted some of their sinfulness, right? The parties, the feasts that they have. 
and like you said, the drinking, they feel like they are like really good champions at drinking or heroes of drinking. And it also says in verse uh, 24 that they rejected God's instructions and they despised His word. Yeah? As they were actually, these are God's people. So they clearly, in enjoying their life, probably thought they were doing okay. Like, if God has blessed me with all this material wealth, I must be doing okay. Yeah. But they were so wrong, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that can happen today in the church? I think mean, can. It's very easy to get distracted from the main, uh, the main reason why you live your life, which is to also be fishers of men. And I think uh, every one of us will like fall, fall into that trap where we are subjected to different material ideas and we want to like, oh, I want more money or I want this car, I want this house. Uh, for us, maybe uh, I want to have a, I want to go to like to the best uni, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are very uh, simple concepts that sometimes lure us away and make us drift away uh, from yeah. from um, what is what is what is more important, uh, the most right. important. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Um, I feel that greed can really take over, and then you can just um, fall short of like what actually matters. Yeah. yeah. And I think it becomes very dangerous. Like, uh, if we are aware of it and we catch ourselves, like, hey, uh, don't do that. I think that's the right step forward. But most of us will uh, have that thoughts come to us. Like, there's like some conscience that pulls us and say, like, hey, uh, don't. We shouldn't be that materialistic. Yeah. But uh, in the process, like, we willingly reject that. Then I think that's the problem, and that's where. Um, that's why in this passage, the, the Israelites were punished very badly. Yeah. And if we really reject um, the message that God wants us to spread and all those kind of things, then that's where the huge, huge problem comes up. Yeah. Yeah, let's say for our viewers who are watching and listening in, whether young, a, a youth, a youth leader or an adult, what advice would you give them as to how do you prevent from becoming someone who thinks we're doing okay just because we have material success, um, but our soul is not well with God? How, how would you, what would you ask them to do to help us in the process to remind ourselves that we, we got to check ourselves? And how, how do you, how would you recommend someone make sure that they, they are able to review and check themselves. What's your recommendation? Um, so how materialistic, like let's say we are faced with material... Or if you have a friend who is like that, uh, how would you advise that person to, to make sure you don't continue like that? Naturally, it would be to check back with the Bible and to yeah. see if what you're doing is edifying yeah. and is um, according to God's um, will. And then, as, and then at the same time, um, I feel that there needs to be prayer as well. Because if you keep close to God and you are obedient and willing to hear what He has to say to you, then I'm very sure He will reveal His, true, um, His will to you and whether or not um, you're going in the right direction. Mm, okay. How about you, Joseph? What do you think? I, I agree. Or, you agree on that? Yeah, yeah. I think I think referring back to the word and uh, preaching from the word is a good step forward. I think also another powerful thing we can do is uh, prayer. Uh, pray for pray for them. Uh, pray for guidance and pray for protection as well. Because I think uh, intercession, even though they may not know that we're praying for them, but I think intercession has a very powerful way of protecting us from whatever is evil. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's also encouraging them to come back to a uh, Christian community or even like a, a, a community that builds them up uh, mm -hmm. yeah, in the right steps, in the right direction. Because yep. yeah, uh, then we can hold each other accountable and uh, as we do more uh, fellowship or we, as we do more community building, it allows us to see our lives better, uh, clearer and we can give each other advice. Uh. I think that's, that's very powerful. Yeah, I want to um, add on to that. I think um, that's very true. 
um, having good community will help us to keep accountable and then whenever we are facing um, struggles or maybe we have um, things we want to just check and ask fellow other, uh, Christians, we can always come back to our community and ask for their opinions on how we should continue or, or like move on from here. Yeah, so I think that's very important as well. And then also for um, leaders, for them to inform their leaders or to share with their leaders so that their leaders are able to um, pray for them and pray that um, God will anoint them with discernment. Yeah, but that, all that would hinge, I mean, it's a good idea, and, and I totally agree, but just that it will hinge on them wanting help and knowing that they are in a bad place, yeah. right? Because then they'll go to the leader or they'll come back to the community. What if they are oblivious to the fact that they are not doing well, they think they are doing well? Like the people here, they probably thought they were doing well, but they weren't. So how can the community help in, in that setting? Mm, I think community, sometimes it's like, um, I guess some people have the argument that it's like a matter of choice, whether you choose to uh, be more connected or go deeper. Yeah. So uh, maybe as the leaders or maybe as like those that are more involved in the community, we have to be more initiated when we realize that some people are not uh, coming to uh, those uh, to to those gatherings, uh, and then we will, and then we should like uh, maybe just drop them a personal max message and ask them, hey, how are you doing? That kind of thing. Yeah. If they never reply, then I think at the end of the day, we really tried already, mm. Yeah, and I think it's uh, we have to always bear that in mind that we are really trying to help those lost sheep. Uh, at the end of the day, those lost sheep, if whether they want to come back to us, is also not really within our control. Yeah. yeah. But we we have the our role is to reach out. Yeah. yeah. So from the community's point of view, from uh, as a community, like what Joseph said, we can reach out on our part. So it doesn't always have to be like a leader reaching out to yeah CG members. It could be fellow CG members reaching out to their yeah. peers and just checking in on them and asking like how they're doing and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So CMC is headed towards uh, forming discipleship groups. Yeah. yeah, small groups of three. And. That would be helpful, I guess, when you look out for each other. Yeah. But uh, one critical factor would be that you've got to give each other permission, right? Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you could think I'm not doing well and you want to advise me, yeah. um, but you don't feel that like you have my permission yeah. to speak that way to me. Let's say I'm your peer, all right? Mm-hmm. Let's say we're the same age. Even then, if I don't give you permission right from the start, say, saying like, oh, look, you know, as well, growing together, if ever you find something amiss in my life, yeah. something I'm going headed the wrong direction, please speak to me. I may not like it, but I promise you I will listen. And I may not react very well initially, but I will listen and I, I want you to tell me. So when you give each other that kind of permission right from the start, yeah. uh, you can speak into each other's life that way. Then I think it makes it easier, right? Yeah, I think one very bold step that uh, would make this discipleship group like effective uh, will be just being vulnerable with one another because yeah. I realise like uh, sometimes when we share things right during our own CG, heart to heart talks, um, I think over time we realise that eh, my, my struggle is not, is about the same as yours, like it's very, uh, it's very deep rooted but we are facing similar and common struggles, yeah. and I think that relatability will be the will be very effective in yeah. uh, combating all the struggles that we all have. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. So this this trait, this this whole, you know, how God's people in Isaiah who felt they were okay, partying, rich, yeah. and they're even arrogant enough to like reject God's word and still think that that was okay. They probably th- thought it was okay. Reminds me actually of Revelation chapter 3, uh, the church in Sardis. They were kind of like that. The Lord told them, I know your deeds and you have a reputation for being alive. So they were a church that was not only active, they had deeds, but they, their deeds were so great that they, were, they had a reputation for being alive. And then Jesus said, but you are dead. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. So it's very similar to this. They thought they were alive. They thought they were doing well. God has blessed them, but God's judgment was coming upon them. So 
it is a, really a reminder for me, my takeaway is that it's a reminder for us to not be complacent, to not, to actually if you have close friends who love you, who care about how you're doing, it, they will be able to see the signs of uh, anything that's going the wrong way. Yeah. And then if you give them permission to say, look, you can tell me anytime, uh, I will learn to receive even words of correction, then I think we can really prevent ourselves from, from such complacency that can lead to terrible, terrible things like, you know, stagnate, being stagnant in our faith without realizing and being, I, I don't ever want to, the Lord to say, I, I may look alive, but I'm dead. You know, that's a terrible uh, indictment, right? Yeah. That would be so terrible to find out one day that all that we've done, we actually been very superficial and it didn't matter to God. Yeah. yeah. So any, any last comments? Well, how, okay, if your, your CGs, are, SEC2 and SEC3 CGs are watching this, and I hope they do, <laughs> what would you say to them now? Uh, simple message, just come for CG. Uh, and <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Come, uh, we will welcome you with open arms. Like, as big as we can get, uh, we'll get bigger. Yeah. Okay. I pray that, um, I hope that you guys are close and you guys will find community in our CG and that um, you, you want to grow deeper together. Yeah, I pray that you guys will be closer. I hope so. Yeah, and for the church, well, that's our message. Um, never be complacent, never think uh, we can do this all by ourselves. We all need each other. And that is why CMC is headed in the direction of uh, discipleship at a closer and smaller number and uh, mentoring one another and, and must give each other permission to speak into each other's life. Sometimes it's hard, but uh, it's better the, um, a, a harsh word from a friend than the kisses of an enemy. So, all right, so that's all for our episode today. Thank you for watching and look out for the next episode of Dwell Podcast. God bless you. Bye.